Hello everybody and welcome. It's been roughly 10 days since Artemis 1 launched. Yes, the big orange rocket lifted up from Cape Canaveral and launched the Orion capsule to the moon. And I took this as an opportunity to, well, recreate the Mission in Kerbal Space program, as you may have already seen from the thumbnail. And also I wanted an excuse to use that footage from the launch again, because... There is some new footage that NASA released from this perspective, where you look straight down the rocket at the fireball of the solid rocket boosters lighting up, uh, lighting up the launch pad and the night skies. That was really something. Here we can see it a little bit better. Look at that illumination. Look at how bright everything is. That rocket really lit up the skies. And well, then it was off into the night sky and was, uh, well, you could really see it well up there because it was so bright with these uh, two giant boosters. But, well, back in Kerbal Space Program, I recreated a one-to-one -one replica of the vehicle. So this thing here is 100 meters tall and no, I'm not launching at night so you can see something and I can see something. And yes, I used a lot of custom flags to create that orange body. We are now close to stage separation, getting rid of those big white boosters. There we go. And of course, in real life, this all looked a lot more spectacular. And it interestingly took a lot more time for the boosters to drop away. Or maybe this was just a trick of the perspective. I don't really know, because that was already really high up there. But you can see that the boosters are still um, still exhausting material, which they do not in Kerbal Space Program. When they're done, they're done. But here we are done with the boosters and we're continuing with our main stage. And next up is an explosion. And that gives us opportunity to test the launch escape system. In real life, of course, the launch escape system just was jettisoned when they didn't need it anymore. And in KSP, I actually tested it to make it really work. So this thing is actually working and could pull away the capsule from a failure. But... Again! Yes, we have to try again, of course, because I don't want to uh, have this exploding on me all the time. So once again, we have the booster separation and then we're up again out of the atmosphere almost and hmm. again, I'm not really sure what's happening there because that fairing separation works like a charm when I'm on the ground. I tested it multiple times. Yeah, as soon as I'm flying, it doesn't anymore. And I'm not really sure why, because there's nothing blocking it. So some weird thing happening there. So I decided third time's the charm, even if it explodes again, because I checked in the menu what exploded. It's not really a vital part. So yes, jettisoned the launch escape system and also get rid of the core stage. We are now on the interim cryogenic propulsion stage with the European service module and Orion on top. And if I might say so, I really think this turned out well for a one-to-one -one, uh, re replica in Kerbal Space Program. There you go, another beauty shot. Yes, I like this thing. Okay, and now the coasting phase, because we need to get to our... Yes, this is now the maneuver node where we get blasting towards the moon. Of course, just the one single engine. Uh, it's not an RL-10, of course, it's just the... Uh, what's it called? I always forget the rocket names. I uh, the, the engine names. Just don't ask me how they're called. Okay, and we have our moon encounter with a good periaps. And this was what happened in real life. Orion and ESM separated from the ICPS. And you can see this CubeSats in there waiting. Because the ICPS carried some CubeSats. I also have some CubeSats in there. We can see those later. And we are separating with... Well, it's not that spectacular as it was in real life, unfortunately. But 
you can see it a lot better and the camera is a lot less grainy. And here we had the ICBS dropping away, which also went to the moon or stayed on a trajectory towards the moon to release those CubeSats. Speaking of the moon, here we are. We are getting closer to it. And now we carefully release the key. Hmm. Well, that's close to real life because many of the CubeSats in real life didn't work. <laughs> Uh, there was one that was supposed to land on the surface, like it would have been the tiniest moon lander ever. Um, but yeah, it did not work at all. Um, not sure where it is or if it crashed or if it's just somewhere in space. I didn't have to read up on that. But here, what we're doing now is getting into our distant orbit around the moon. It's not the retrograde orbit, which uh, which is what happened in real life, but it's just a normal orbit here in KSP. So speaking of real life, we got some really great footage from Orion from the moon, and we can see the Earth setting behind the horizon of the moon there. I know people complained about the image quality during the live stream, but hey, that was a live stream from the moon. And now we finally got some full HD video from those GoPro 4 cameras on the solar wing tips. And it's actually pretty impressive. I think this is impressive. What do you think? Tell me in the comments. If you, if you don't think this is impressive, I don't know what's wrong with you. <laughs> I mean, look at that. Look at the, the, at least the detail of the, uh, of the vehicle of Orion itself. Yes, of course, we don't get uh, super uh, resolution detailed views of uh, the moon because those cameras are wide angle. They're there to see how the vehicle is doing because this is a test flight to test how Orion is doing. And while it is still up there, as I said, we're in day 10 of the real mission, in KSP we're already planning the return, which is set, I think, in real life for December 11th. So... Uh, be on the lookout for that, mark your calendar or something, and wait for its return. Alright, we're firing our big engine again. Well, so big. Well, it's not that big, but it's big-ish. <laughs> the biggest engine on this vehicle now. And yes, we are heading for re-entry. This means we're separating the European service module. Thank you, you have served us well, and we are hoping that the heat shield will be enough to dissipate uh, the heat that's going to be experienced during that re-entry. And while we're heating up, we can see the service module getting destroyed by the aerodynamic and heat forces. There we go, some fireworks along the way. I think it's got one more in it. Yes, there we go. <laughs> All right. Oh, another one. Hey, there you go. The gift that keeps on giving. Or the vehicle that keeps on exploding. Let's hope so that in real life it's just one big fireball and then it's gone. So, because that's a lot more predictable. Speaking about predictable... um. <laughs> In real life, Orion is planned to be landed in the water, so a splashdown in the ocean. Uh, I did not predict the trajectory really that well, unfortunately, and we ended up. Well, if you've seen, if you if you scroll, uh, if you uh, scroll back the video a little, you will see that there is water in the background. But yeah, we're going to hit the grass, unfortunately. But. Fortunately, this thing is sturdy enough. Let's hope that the real Orion will also have a safe re-entry and a safe landing. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.